to my channel. My name is Johanna, and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner-related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video. Also, commenting, liking, and sharing this video does help my channel grow and would be truly appreciated. All right, it is a work night. I am crafting. <laughs> Yep, it is what it is. So what we're gonna be making today is some envelopes that you don't need any special tools. Although if you have the envelope punch board, then by all means make it with that. It's just probably a lot easier. Uh, but if you don't have all the tools or you're doing this in a group setting and not everyone has the tools, if you're doing it this kids or elderly or just whatever, um, I think this is gonna be a really quick and easy project that you can do. You can also, uh, do something like this for a craft fair. Once I've shown you how to put it together, I'll actually show you a couple of different variations that I've made. So what you're going to need is six by six paper. Now, if you already have it cut down like this, super convenient, awesome. But if all you have is eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12, then just get a piece that's six by six. And that's for any of the videos that I've done in the past where if you don't have a six by six paper, uh, just get it to that size and then you can start along with the craft. Now, you know that I have quite a few of these six by six paper pads, but the one we're gonna be working on tonight today, whenever it is for you, is with these fall autumn type ones that my mom bought from Target last year. Uh, I haven't been to Target since all the new fall stuff came out, so I don't know if this is something that is available. Again, it isn't inherently for fall this particular craft. It's just this one. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing it for. But in the other examples I'll show you at the end of the video, um, I can show you why it doesn't inherently have to be for fall. So you're going to just want to get two pieces of paper. One is going to be for your envelope and one is going to be for your card. So we'll get these two. And the good thing about these little paper pads, whatever style you're using for whatever occasion you're using it for, typically they usually match. So even these two, I could use interchangeably between the two. All right, so um, I kind of like this for the card. So we're gonna use this. Now again, if you have the envelope punch board, um, what we're gonna be shooting for is about a three and a half inch envelope. Cause a card is really easy to make, but it's the envelope that if you don't have the special tools can sometimes be intimidating. But I'm gonna tell you it's super easy. So what we're gonna do is, I have a pencil. For the very first one you make, you're probably gonna just wanna make your template. And I've actually used all my templates, so we'll just do this together. Now you have your square inch piece of paper here. I want you to turn it to the side, and I'm sorry, it's probably hard to see because it's on white, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And basically we just wanna draw a line from corner to corner. Now this is a handmade craft. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. And all of you mathematicians out there, if there is an easier way to do this, then definitely do it that way. <laughs> but this is how I've been doing it. So basically I just want some lines that I can see. And I'll put that to the side, get out an eraser. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna fold this up. Now, if your paper is directional, this really isn't, but if yours is, then you're definitely gonna to want to be mindful of the direction because really, you're only gonna be seeing the flaps and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I'm not even gonna measure, I just kinda of wanna eyeball about an inch of this above that center line right there. And I wanna make sure that my point hits that center line right there. And then I'll just do a crease. If you have a bone folder, awesome. If you don't, 
don't even worry about it. Then you're gonna rotate it and you're gonna do the same. Now again, we're not measuring, so we just wanna make sure that our, our point is at that line. And then we want about an inch um, above that center line. Go ahead and score it and then turn it the opposite way and do it again. Now, of course, you could measure this to make sure that all of your triangles, because from that center line up is a triangle, is absolutely the same size, but again, um, it's a handmade craft. We're not looking for perfection, and this is not going to be an heirloom, so it's not like you have to, to worry about that. Now, there's two ways that you can do this, depending on how you want to give this as um, a craft, a placeholder, or whatever. And so let me show you what I mean by that. Now here and here are our fold lines. So if I fold it up that way, that makes that fold line. And then when I fold it up, it makes that fold line. Now I think it's better to cut those out because that just adds unnecessarily unnecessary bulk to your project. And so there and there. Now, if you wanted to make this into a true envelope, then you would actually fold this down into whatever size flap you wanted. So long as the envelope is bigger than three by three, then you're good. And we are at three and a quarter, so we're fine because the little inserts we're making are three by three. So if you made it into an envelope, then again, you'd wanna fold down and you'd wanna cut off those pieces because again, it just adds unnecessary bulk to your project. Okay, and so you've got your little envelope. And then you could play around. I actually like putting that flap on top because uh, I think it covers those really well, but that's up to you. But this could be your template. And I'll show you the other way. This paper is a little bit thinner, so let's get the apple and see if we can be mindful of the direction, because that would fold up like that. And which one is our top? Does it matter? I think that's our top. No, because I can see the black. And I, uh, well, what? Is that just the paper? See that? Okay. Because <laughs> I can see the ink. So it's this way. Goodness. Gold star teacher here, guys. The reason why that's important is because... I don't know why that was important. Let's just make our template. It's nine o'clock at night. I know better than this, guys. I know better. And so basically, we just wanna make those marks where we're cutting out. And that's the only two you'll need for this one. And so this one will want to fold. Actually, it's easier to fold this way because then we can see what we've done. And the reason why you'd probably want to make the template is one, this will go a lot faster, but also so you don't see the pencil. Cause I mean, you can erase it, but you know, that just extra time you could be crafting. 
and then we want to fold it against that mark as well. And because it's a long enough line, you can get a reasonably straight edge. Again, if you have a bone folder, use that, but mine is tucked away. So I'm just gonna use the materials that I have and I'm gonna fold it so that I get a straight line based on that line. And then I'm going to cut it. I think it's easier to do it that way than the other way, where you cut it and then you fold. Although, to be perfectly honest, I didn't try it that way, but this just makes more sense because I can see the lines. And so cut that out. Now today, I'm gonna be using my Tombow glue. I didn't cut that very straight. Now, as I tell you in all of these videos, you do yours, take your time, enjoy the process. Don't do it before bed. <laughs> But this is the Tombow glue. It dries relatively quickly. Um, I'm almost out of the other one. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of glue there just to have this flap attached to something. And then I'm gonna put some glue here. I don't wanna put any glue in that middle section because I do need this to be an actual envelope. Oh, and maybe I shouldn't glue it so close to the top. Oh no, we should be fine. And I like that there is a little bit of a, a spring action because we're gonna stuff this, okay? Now the reason why I didn't cut the top registration is because this is exactly how I'm going to leave it. I'm not actually going to fold it over. So it's, it's more of a stuffable envelope than like a little card envelope. But if you were making that kind, uh, first of all, you probably want to use one that isn't your template. Hate erasing. <laughs> but you would essentially do it exactly the same way, where you glue just a little bit, just to keep one flap down, and then you would glue the sides here. Again, not putting too much at the point because the point might not have anything to stick to. And you don't wanna glue this shut. Now, I don't know that this is something that you can put in the mail. <laughs> I don't know, um, because it's such an odd size. Uh, I don't know what kind of postage this would be. But I think this would be a great little treat if you are making it as a group, if you are making it with your class, if you are making it uh, for a craft fair, for your coworkers, for whatever. I think it makes a sweet little envelope. And then for the matching card, there's actually two ways you can do it. So I'm gonna put these to the side while they dry and then we'll finish those up. Now for this, as you know, I can't cut a straight line. So I am going to get out my cutter in my tiny little space. And the two ways you can make your card is by cutting your six by six paper in six by three or cutting it in three inch squares. Oh, okay, I think we're saved. And then you can either choose to give an actual little card that folds and you would just want to fold that in half or you could just have like a little insert here okay now for this one because it's a proper envelope i would probably put a proper card and as you can see it fits again so long as your envelope measures more than three inches then this is not a problem but let's say we want to make this a little bit more decorated 
so you can take some scraps. Now I have this in my stash. This actually belonged to my sister and it's actually really pretty, but it's a, it's a weird size. And I know why she has it because she liked making cards. Um, but the direction on these is not great because it's all like this. And a lot of times I want things that are more vertical than horizontal, but we can still make it work. So what I'll do is, now if you had die cuts or punches or, or things like that, you can certainly use that. But, well, I think I do, but I don't know where they are. So we are just going to do something very freehand because I like that butterfly and I like that it's brown because we're going to do this as sort of a Thanksgiving fall kind of thing because I think this would make a great placeholder if you were doing a family dinner. Now if you watch tutorials on YouTube where they do like junk journals and things like that, the next step would be to bust out your ink pad or your distress spray or whatever and then just kind of ink the sides to get rid of that white but I don't have that. So we are going to use a Sharpie. <laughs> That'd be even better if I had like a brown Sharpie, but whatever. So again, is this super high quality? No, <laughs> but it's what I have. And it is something that is handmade. Again, the color is probably not that great, but it does add some of the white. It does make it a look a bit distressed. And we're gonna do a little bit of that to add to it. Now again, this would be your personal preference. All of this black edged, torn paper, crinkly, might be driving you crazy. But I kind of like the look of it. Now, if this is something that you're doing for a craft fair, then it's less about what you like the look of and more of what do you think your customers <laughs> like the look of? Because in that case, you might want to actually do punches or things like that but I think that looks kind of sweet. And I put it off to the side because I did want to make sort of like a banner thing. And clearly I'm not very good at this. But I think once we get it all together, it'll it'll come out okay. It'd be better if this wasn't such thick paper. <laughs> but whatever, we're using what we have. All right, now I want to add some color to this, but the black is a little stark. So what are we going to do? I'm just using some colors, as you can see, on a plastic. I don't know that you can actually see anything on the plastic or if the glare is insane. Add a little bit of black. And then, try not to make too much of a mess. I'm gonna just pour a drop of water. Now again, if you're mass producing this, you probably won't want to do this part. <laughs> but again, if you're doing this as a craft with a, a, a group of kids or some elderly or your church or your work, then you can just be creative with your stuff because you may not have full on craft land at wherever it is you're doing this. All right, that's, that's a lot of water. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know.
know if this is going to work the way I want it to, but it's certainly making a mess. All right, let's get some color before it all dries up. That's not too bad. It's, I mean, it's, it's certainly not what you'll see on the tube, but it's good for nine o'clock at night without the proper supplies. All right, so I'll put that to the side. I promise, guys, there is there is a destination in mind. The execution may not be great, but there is a destination. All right, so let me dry this. And even though I know better, I'm going to write on this before I glue it down. Now, if you were doing this as a group, then this might be one of the things you do in the beginning to let it dry. And then you can write on it. But that little technique did take away a little bit of the starkness of the white, so that's good. And yeah, I think we'll put that to the side there. Again, the execution's not great, but I think you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. And so. And then just sort of collage that. And then maybe we can cut out this butterfly. Now the ones that I'm gonna show you at the end of the video, so you know if you're still here, please stay tuned for that, are definitely less artsy, <laughs> but I think just as viable an option, but also just as cute. Because I really am digging this. And we'll just put a little bit of glue. Again, as a craft fair project, this is definitely something that's too time consuming for what you probably can get for it. Because I'm thinking, depending on what you're stuffing in, inside of this, this could be a, a dollar or two or three. Um, but if you're taking this much time on your project, then you would need to charge more and then that's just not effective because people won't buy it. But I think this would make an excellent little craft if you're doing it um, as a group function or if you're making something special as place settings. And for this one, let's see if we can find something that's less fussy. I like that. And we can sort of cut out. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm not really gonna fussy cut anything. I'm just gonna try to get the main points. I'm not really good at fussy cutting because uh, I'm not very patient. But again, if you have a bunch of these or if you make a bunch of these, if you're just watching TV and just making some ephemera, or if you have something that goes with it, then by all means use that. But I'll go ahead and add some shape. And again, this definitely is less organic <laughs> than that one is, but I think very stunning. We're going to glue that down. Because this isn't meant to be closed, this really is very just free for decoration. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Okay, so that you'd probably want to actually do on this side. And the reason I didn't think about that is when I show you the examples that I have, you'll, you'll see what I mean. And in there we could put a sticker or if you have some gel pens, I don't know if the gold will show. I 
thankful for you. I don't know if you can see that, but I think that looks kind of sweet. Okay. So now that we have that done, and again, you could also put stuff on your card. You can make this as fancy as you want. Now for this right here, if you were doing this as a little happy mail to a friend, or if you were doing this as a play setting, then you probably wouldn't want to do much more than this, or uh, you could actually stick a bag of tea in here. I think that'd be really cute, maybe in the the front um, or maybe a piece of chocolate. Now I'm not going to say that I had some Ghirardelli here that I could have put inside here. I'm not going to say that was a thing but um, it was delicious. So I do have these York peppermint patties and that fit in. Again you'd want something relatively flat so a York peppermint patty, a Ghirardelli square, a Godiva square if, if that's in your budget and then that just closes really nice and then you could put like a name tag on here and then put this like on your plate if you're doing this as a place setting if you're um, giving this to friends at work I mean again however you decide to do it this is you know nice and portable again the decoration you probably want to do on that side but for something like this which honestly I, I'm digging you could put a tea bag in there. You could put your little card in there. You could put, well, maybe not a Halloween themed York peppermint patty, but you know, you could put that there. Uh, this is some coffee that my folks had brought back from Germany. If you have the Via coffee from Starbucks, that would fit as well. Again, we're not closing it, so it doesn't matter if it's kind of bulky, yeah? And I think that looks really sweet. And then you can put it in a clear bag and this bag measures four by, I believe eight and a half or eight and a quarter. And again, I think this makes a really cute favor. Now you could top it off if you wanted to. I kind of like the idea of leaving it open like that. But again, if you're doing this for a craft fair, then you're gonna probably wanna make this look as professional as you can. But I think that looks really sweet. I love how that came out, I'm not gonna lie. But let's say you wanted some other ideas. I mean, get a clean surface and I'll show you the other two that I've made. All right, so these are some of the other ones that I made just to show you some examples. Again, I don't know why, but I like the idea that it's open on the top. Now this one is a Christmas themed one. Now I had all of this in my stash. Um, if you're a crafter, then you just have stashes of things. I have tons of pencils. I don't know why. I don't like to use pencils, but I do think they're fun to give away and they're definitely fun to craft with. Here is a sheet of stickers. This is a little Santa ruler. These here, I know that I found in Walmart last year um, and they were in the like the party favor section. And then again, you could choose to do two methods of your card, either a actual card or just one like this. This does give you, like you can make this a little gift and then you could do a little bit of journaling or sentiment inside it. And all this is, is just some um, cardstock. This is the Martha Stewart 6x6 paper pad and then some of these gift tags and I think when you put it out like this it makes it look really sweet. And then that's all stuffed in here. Again you could add a little piece of chocolate. Now I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. I'd actually only add one but you can choose which method of card you wanted to do. And if you wanted to, if you know they have these for the holidays, you could put a peppermint patty in there. This actually stuffs rather well. Or candy cane, that actually probably would look super cute in there, but I don't have any. And then again, so long as, because if you can see, the, the cards aren't the same size, the envelopes. And if you're making that template like I showed you, then all of yours will be exactly the same size as your original. But I think that looks super sweet and would be great as a craft fair 
item or as a gift for a coworker or for a coworker's child or if you're doing this as a group activity for your church or your temple or whatever. Uh, I think you can make it work for whatever the season is or whatever the occasion is. And then for Halloween, I have the exact same kind. Again, open at the top. This one has a coordinating pencil with the little York. Again, the two cards, depending on what style uh, that you wanted to do. And then I had these here that I found in the stationery section uh, where the greeting cards are, not necessarily by the Halloween stuff, um, but there are two little sticker sheets in here that I just washed on because I wanted to have you see them. And they're washed in a way so that it doesn't affect any actual stickers. And there's two sticker sheets. And because I had the black washi, it just actually kind of ties. This I just cut and crinkled. I did some lettering. And that's also black Sharpie. Card would go in here, whichever one you chose to do. And then the little candy. And then the pencil. And I think that makes just the cutest little treat right there. Three different styles, three different holidays. It can be as fancy or as simple as you want it to do. Um, when you see these things in the store, if you have a stash, uh, you're gonna wanna look for things that are narrow because these are, um, if not three inches, they are a little bit less. If you have Christmas tags that you bought after the Christmas um, was done and you got them at like the 75 or 90% off, you know, this can work with any paper pad. I have some of these holiday stickers that I think would be super cute. I have some of these ephemera, again, all in my stash. So depending on what it is that you have and what you're making it for, just go through the things that you have already and then see what kind of you know little pockets that you can make um, as gifts. Although, at the very fundamental of it, uh, just the little card and the little envelope makes just a super little sweet sentiment if you're mailing something to a friend. All right, guys, and I don't know if I said it, but I think this is craft number seven of my craft series, if you're still here. <laughs> Let me know what you think of these. I think these came out super sweet. I'm actually going to have a York peppermint patty before I go to bed. And that's it for me until next time. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on this journey. And as always, aloha.